to episode 25 of San Sharati Talks. This is a special one because we are filming it live as we do the conversation. So I just want to thank all you guys uh, for being patient. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see the full video. And if you listen to it on your headphones, uh, just through a podcast site, that's cool as well. Also, I just want to say as well, um, my, my agent has told me to uh, make sure that um, I mention this and I hate doing this, but it's just something that um, I, I've been told to do. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It's the first time you're on the channel. We've got loads of uh, podcasts that are in the archive. Have a listen to those. And we've also got some really cool guests appearing. Also, if you're sharing, make sure you use the hashtag Sansarati Talks or one word. All right, cool. That stuff's over and done with. Um, I'm just going to introduce to you. Um, she's someone that I've been working with for a couple of years now. She's an amazing artist. She's fast becoming one of the most important, in my opinion, um, most important uh, sort of contemporary, culturally relevant artists uh, in our current era. Um, she's incredible. She's worked with some of the most coolest people ever. She's breaking boundaries as not just as an artist but also as a female artist um i'm super proud to be recording this podcast with her please welcome to the stage sarah pope hi Sanj. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> no worries how are you doing yeah i'm really good, yeah, I'm good? really good okay cool yeah. um thanks so much for for uh, coming to the show oh, you're welcome. um we we just done something uh, sarah's working on a project at the moment so she's in my office we've recorded something i'm not going to say what it is because I want to spoil the surprise um, but that's the reason why she's here it's not that she lives with me um, although that would be kind of cool actually I think if we live together it'd be <laughs> it's fine a bit weird. Uh, it'd be weird <laughs> because you, you and your wife well you, you get on really well with you I, I think do. I think you guys would actually have a better time than, yeah um, <laughs> but uh, no welcome to the show um there's going to be people who uh, are listening who don't know about you mm. um, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you're about Okay, so uh, as you mentioned, I'm an artist. Um, I've been making art for maybe about 12 years. Um, so prior to that, um, when I first, uh, you know, uh, started started off life, I actually studied a degree in mathematics wow. and then went on to have a career in the magazine industry and design and art direction. And then followed that with um, going into the fashion world as a shoe designer. Um, and uh, wow. <laughs> sounds okay. like a lot, right? Yeah, I, I mean, um, sorry, mathematics, is that yeah. where you started? That's I where I started. That. You did. did I'm I? sure you knew that. No, no? you <laughs> kept that quite quiet. Math. So you've gone from studying maths to being like an amazing artist. Oh, um, and so, so how did you... Uh, like I mean, I understand the fashion element of it mm. because obviously you're. You, if you've checked out, make sure you check out Sarah's art. It's like incredible uh, from a visual perspective. Mm. It's very. I do draw on my. Fa I, do, I think I draw on my fashion background and magazine. You know, it's all very aesthetic and visual, and um, that's that's definitely. Um, I draw on that within my art, definitely. Right. But I, I you know, I, I for quite a while, I kind of thought that my maths degree had. It was a bit irrelevant, but actually, you know, now I kind of see that, you know, all, all of the things that are encompassed within maths are in my art. Mm. And, you know, maths is like the, the language of the universe. So, you know, I think it's very relevant, actually. Amazing. And so, um, so, so you've, you've been a professional artist now for a, a while. Mm. How did you get into that industry? Um, so it's funny because because I started you know off doing a maths degree I kind of had no confidence in my creative self like I hadn't really had any kind of reinforcement that I was you know a creative person but I obviously had it inside me and I was always drawing always you know uh yeah always drawing but like at one point I remember at the time I was um I, I was in a shoe design job and I just came to the realization that I can't not do this anymore I can't wow. not paint so I just I just started and I had absolutely no idea of where it was going to lead to I didn't even think of that it was just like I have to get this expression out and that's when I just I basically just started painting in my kitchen so wow <laughs> I was just in my kitchen <laughs> and I actually it was kind of fortunate that at that time I happened to be made redundant 
redundant from that particular job. So I got given, it was like four months or something where I technically didn't have to start working again yet. Yes. So then I really just went for it. So that's really interesting because um, redundancy is actually something that is, is a part of life. Yeah. It happens to a lot of people. I've been in situations where I've worked at companies and we're kind of going through this moment where, you know, people are like, well, actually, you may be made redundant. It's very emotional. Yeah, it even can, the word is is like, it, there's a lot of emotion attached to the, the word redundant. Yeah, it's like being dumped. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, you are not needed. <laughs> yeah. You are valueless. Wow. And, and, no, but, but actually, I mean, for me, it was great. Yeah, so it's, it's really interesting you say that because... Um, you know, I always believe when you know when one door closes, mm. there's ten new opportunities. Definitely. You know, and you, yeah. it, it can be sad when you're going through that, and you have to go through that. You have to kind of grieve that moment mm. uh, or process that moment. Um, but the fact that it's taking you to become this artist yeah. that, that that was the door that was right for you yeah so that's how you got into industry it was something that was pulsating in you yeah it wasn't like it wasn't even there was no like career move or anything like that it was just something that I felt I had to do and I you know there was no thought that it might pay for my life or anything like that it was just something like it was as pure as that I just need to do this and if I have to you know find jobs on the side all my life like that's what I'll do to give me time to do this thing that's you know um and I absolutely resisted getting another full-time shoe job which would have been very easy um in order to keep some time for myself to be able to like you know explore amazing amazing um wow I feel like we've only just started the podcast and we've already started to get like really <laughs> kind of like biblical with our with our uh, quotes here which is brilliant um because because I need that for the podcast <laughs> um Tell us about the production process of making one of your paintings because you've told me about yeah. it before and it's very unique. Mm. Um, let's let, yeah, tell, tell us about that. So um, it, yeah, if you just see my work online or whatever, it can be quite hard to understand, uh, you know, what that production process is and what it's made of. And I mean, firstly, they're all based on real people, so they're not just pure fantasies. There, I, I always have a subject. So that could be a subject, somebody who's commissioned me or some, I often use models. So the starting point will be to um, have that person come to my studio and then we'll do a photo shoot. Um, so it's just me and the person. I do, um, I do very specific makeup. Um, then I set up the lights in a particular way. And then basically then it's just an interaction between me and the person. And I'll take thousands of shots really close up on the mouth kind of capturing that person's emotion that person's sort of expression and um yeah that those pictures then become the kind of foundation that I draw inspiration to start the painting um so wow. when I start the painting the painting is an oil painting so I work with oil paints because I really like the intensity of the color that they provide mm. also I have a very particular technique when I'm painting which is to you know it, it's very very blended so I add oils to the paints and I, I blend and I build up in layers to the point where it almost looks like it could be a digital image because it's so perfect you don't see any brush strokes and that's kind of this you know how I've developed um how I want my you know my paintings to come across so it's like it's based in reality but it ends up being slightly a fiction it's kind of yeah amazing and um it's so interesting to hear that there's like two parts to that um, yeah. creative process because um i mean you know I, I, I'm, I'm not an art aficionado but my my kind of ignorance just makes me think it's generally speaking that you would see something and and, and that's it mm. but when you hear about that process and yeah. the fact that you have this kind of very it sounds like it's a very intimate moment it with is. your subject yeah it really is yeah just me and the person in a room for sometimes hours <laughs> so yeah <laughs> really? hours? yeah okay, yeah, that's yeah interesting <laughs> um and then um so so that that's how the production process works. Um, your paintings are seen internationally, like mm. they're they're all over the place. Like yeah. the, there's there's 
there's a Sarah Pope at the Vatican. Am I right? That's right, yeah. And we'll talk about that later because <laughs> that's quite an interesting story. Um, your, your pieces are selling internationally, as I said. Um, how does that make you feel? Like, how do you feel about that? Because as you said, you went through this uh, period in your life where you were made redundant, where there's this kind of negative mm. kind of perspective on, on your value. And when I say um, your value, I mean that from someone's perspective, not... You, you know, yeah, you know yeah. obviously there's value there. You start painting in a kitchen mm. and now you're this international rock star. <laughs> I mean, Sarah is, you are, sure rock, I, th- I think you are a rock star. <laughs> How do you feel about that when you consider that, that kind of growth? Um, I feel, I feel pretty proud, um, you know, uh, but I don't often feel like that. It's, it's usually just comes in little moments. Like I had um, some work in the Saatchi Gallery a year or so ago. And it's one of those moments where you're like, oh, actually, yeah, this is this, this is great. That, uh, yeah, I put, you know, when I think back and I was just in my kitchen and now I've got some work in the Saatchi Gallery that, uh, you know, I was I was really happy and, you know, joyful about that. But just in general, like maybe mainly it 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 really fills me with happiness that my work connects with people yes that's the point that's why I do it it's like it's a communication and so the fact that that's landing and that people are you know receiving some kind of communication from it some feeling something that's that's why I do it and that makes me feel really happy Mm, and it's it is a very therapeutic uh, thing to have when you're when you're creative and that creative creativity connects with people in yeah. a unique way oh, and like I only know that from from you know some of the music stuff that I've done mm. where you write a song and someone you have no idea who they are they sing in the lyrics to you and yeah. they talk to you about how it connects with you so I can imagine that's a beautiful feeling yeah um that's that's wonderful um you've worked with loads of famous people and some of the events I've been to with Sarah uh, there's quite a few famous people there some some funny funny ones as well we've met together um but you've worked with um uh, one of my favorite bands Ronnie Stones Ronnie Wood mm. tell us about that that piece and tell us about that experience Okay, so that was for an exhibition called, I think it was called Face Value, um, basically raising money for the Katie Piper Foundation, yes, yes. which is basically um, helping people who have had their appearance changed in some way, whether through scarring or an accident or whatever. And, you know, obviously, obviously your visual identity really is very connected to your your mental state so it can be very disturbing mentally and emotionally Mm. to have your appearance changed so um the idea for the exhibition was to kind of tie into that where um i think maybe 10 artists were chosen and they were tasked with making an artwork but then all of those artworks were then given to uh, another artist who the, each artist was paired with someone and then that artist would work over the top so the idea was that okay this artwork gets transformed but actually it becomes even more beautiful you know the end thing so it's kind of nice metaphor for you know um the the you know collaboration in that kind of and just, artistic you know so visually something is one thing and then it changes but it's not necessarily worse yes you know yeah. um so wow. that was that was the the point of the exhibition and i got paired with ronnie wood <laughs> <laughs> and and so what was that process from a production so project? i was the starter artist right. so basically um i did a piece and then it got given to ronnie and then he did he worked over the top got you got you and yeah. did you meet him i actually didn't that was just yeah it would, it would have been fun to mm. meet him but he didn't come to the exhibition yeah so. i mean he, obviously he's a busy person but he's also quite old as well with respect um so i'm assuming because i remember when we went to that launch um for that yeah. event it was like it was, it was chaos on, yeah, it? yeah like i remember like you, it was quite a tiny space in shoreditch wasn't it yeah, yeah. and i remember you, you you couldn't kind of move that much <laughs> and there was just so much alcohol and people were just like yeah you know because there were people walking by like what's going on here and yeah i don't know if they were being careful with the guest list but it was just rammed yeah. um and i can assume him being there would would have been even crazier oh, maybe yeah maybe it would have caused a mm. stir but like katie was there katie pie yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she was really cool like, yeah really really cool energy um so uh, so we've talked about um 
one famous experience. Now we're going to talk about something which I'm always quite loud about whenever I talk about you yeah. because it's I, th I think it's a really important thing from mm. a cultural perspective um, and also from a like a, an ambitious perspective. I'm sure there's people listening who who would get inspired by this. Um, you are the first British female artist in over 70 years to have a piece of work accepted into the Vatican collection. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. Okay, so I was uh, doing an exhibition in Italy um, near to Rome. And um, I sometimes do, like most of my work is, is focused on the mouth as a subject, but I sometimes also do portraits. I, when I first started painting, I was only interested in the face. It was... It, for me it's like where your expression is where your personality and where your character is and I decided to do something special for my exhibition I wanted to do a portrait of somebody who was culturally relevant important so I decided to do a portrait of Pope Francis Wow! <laughs> and um, on, on my behalf the Vatican was approached with you know the, an image of the work and apparently the Pope loved it so <laughs> I got invited to uh, donate it to the Vatican collection and I got invited to go there and um, yeah, hand over the piece. Wow! So, so just rewind <clears throat> a little bit. So you you initiated this creativity, mm. and then it was yeah. So there was no like um, them knocking on your door, you knocking no. on your door. You you just became creative, and it ended up opening doors for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And when you went to see it in the Vatican, what was that like? What was that experience like? So I haven't actually seen seen it hung because when I went there I was basically handing over the painting wow okay um, so here you go <laughs> there you go love um, and so like, you know, okay. I don't know exactly where it is I must go back there so, and find it <laughs> so funny story Joe and I were in Rome in Easter and we, were, we did the mm. Vatican tour and I was looking for it I was like running around and um, do you know what? I should have I should have put a tracker in it you so that I know where yeah, it is yeah. Um, it's in the loo. I'm sure it's there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, we're going to go to hell. Um, we are. Yeah, Luckily, but, I'm not religious. <laughs> but that's that's amazing. That's amazing. And um, so, and how long has it been there? Um, oof, maybe six years or something. Okay, so it's wow. Okay, that's yeah. that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> um, awesome story. Um, let's talk about your current work. Mm. Um, and it's something that's just recently been uh, just kind of uh, released. Um, you currently. Uh, have a Brighton flock statue is that how you pronounce it um, created in collaboration with Sean the Sheep mm. um, tell us about um, how that happened and also yeah. the creative process of making that happen because it's quite a unique piece even for you yeah oh yeah I mean um, yeah that one was it was kind of fun uh, basically for, for you know raising money for charity so um, you, you might have seen around the country um, the Wild in Art Trails right. so it's a big organised thing and um, there's you know, there's always one in Brighton every two years and this time it happened to be in collaboration with Sean the Sheep and basically there's an open call for artists to who want to do a sculpture and um, uh, so I submitted a, a design of what I wanted to do and uh, 42 artists got chosen wow. to create a sculpture um, uh, which was, mine was one of them so basically we all got provided with this sort of quite huge actually <laughs> sculpture <laughs> of Sean the Sheep which we which all the artists then had to paint with the uh, design that they'd submitted and the idea is that um, you know they they're all sort of uh, dotted around Brighton and Hove and it's like a trail so you can go and find all the different sheep and then um, at the end of November they're all auctioned off and then that raises usually thousands for the Martlets Hospice Charity. Amazing, amazing. Talk to us about that production process because these sheeps are, they have to go out into, uh, you know, the, the open air mm. so they have to be like protected from like weather, weather and yeah. things like rain, like cold climate. And actually unfortunately mine got vandalized what? um yeah last weekend oh, i'm so sorry to hear that yeah so we're, we're seeing what we can do um when you say it was vandalized how was it vandalized was it like damaged yeah really yeah some people i think sat on it um so then that broke the legs oh god and then another group of people kind of 
you know took it on themselves to lift it up and take it somewhere so yeah it was it was really quite devastating actually i'm so sorry um, to hear that it was quite mindless so you know we, we're seeing what we can do because obviously we'd still like to be able to auction it and raise money so um yeah fingers crossed that we can repair God. and and did they did they find the people who did it well they're on cctv oh okay and, um one of them put photos on facebook so <laughs> i know it's just what? it's a bit of a shocker oh gosh i'm gonna cut this out with some beats but what a f- <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry to hear that that's, that's awful yeah, that's, that's like... absolutely awful um uh, let's let's move on from that yeah. um okay so we're, we're kind of coming to the end of mm-hmm. the podcast i feel like we've kind of just breezed through it uh, i thought it's gonna take like a lot longer but it doesn't matter and also I always feel like I can talk to you for, forever and we're going to go to the pub after this so don't worry we're going to talk for longer so don't feel bad for us alright feel bad for we the... feel bad for you because you yeah. won't be in the pub with yeah. us <laughs> um, what advice um, so there's going to be lots of people listening to this who are going to mm. be inspired by you I know mm. I'm inspired by you what advice would you have given yourself if you knew now what you didn't know then when you started in this industry um it's it's funny because I feel like I'm not sure what advice would have helped except the things that I was already doing, which is just basically listen to the authenticity of what you're doing and right. why you're doing it, you know. Um, and that's what I did from the very beginning. I just knew that that's what I had to do. So um, I always made sure that... Um, like I supported my art rather than it, I, I put pressure on it to support me. Yes, uh, you know because I think it's really important to give to give your creativity time and support to let it develop. You know because like it takes time like to develop and to understand what you're doing. Like because I think like when you start off, it's very unconscious. You're just doing things and you're expressing and and painting or in, in whatever way but not necessarily knowing why and like the more you do it and you know the the further along the road you go it you sort of come to awareness and realizations about what you're doing and why and that just that's just putting the time in and you know going through that process but yeah I would say creativity is a thing to be nurtured like absolutely you know, if you, if you feel the need to do this thing, then support it. Whether that means like getting a part time job or you know, um, then then do that because yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you say that because I'm sure there's a lot of artists out there, struggling artists or um, kind of young artists, and I mean mentally young, who uh, you know they want that kind of. I don't want to say success, but they want that, um, you know, that win to happen mm. quickly. Yeah. And the reality is, particularly with creativity or, or any kind of craft work, you do need to put in that time and focus. Yeah. Um, and as you, one of the best things you just said there, learn about yourself. Yeah. And how you work, I guess. And Yeah. And that just kind of, that just unfolds. You can't, hurry that up well you know you can you can in the way that like you know you can do research you can you can expose yourself to lots of different things and experiences but it go it it unfolds at the rate that it unfolds Mm. like if you're if you're only in it for like a quick win then you might be disappointed it might take as long as it takes so um you've you know i guess your your motivations need to be authentic and that um you know you talked about the disappointment that disappointment can be brutal um but that's also part of the learning definitely Mm. yeah thank you for that um that's brilliant um okay we've come to the end (laughs) um i know there's gonna be people on here watching this listening to this to us um who want to get in contact with you how Mm -hmm. can people find you uh so you can find me uh, on my website at sarah without a h sarah pope art.com or i'm also on instagram sarah pope artist awesome awesome thank you so much oh thank you for having me (laughs) it's been great it's been great it's been awesome um 
those of you listening um thanks so much for listening um again please like and subscribe if you like this podcast we've got some guests coming up that you're going to love even actually you won't love them more than sarah but there'll <laughs> be some say, cool... where's he going with this <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna uh, there's gonna be some we've got some cool guests coming also we've got an archive of of uh shows that we've done have a listen to them um, also reach out to us those of you that are already subscribed and who are reaching out to me thank you so much i really appreciate um all of your positivity um you know we're getting about two thousand downloads per episode which is amazing um which is brilliant so thank you so much for that um wherever you are whatever you're doing please be good cool. <laughs>